Once upon a time, it was easier to get a degree in rocket science than become a video game master. That's because many games were just ridiculously hard, requiring countless lost lives and dozens of game overs before the typical gamer could even sniff the ending. Today, however, many games are far easier to beat than their predecessors. But why? It's not because today's gamers are soft, the truth is more complicated than that. Smoother controls it's one thing to bite the dust in a game because the enemy is too strong, it's quite another to die because your character was harder to control than the post-iceberg Titanic. Even classics like the original Castlevania featured stiff movements, weak jumping, and delayed reactions to button presses, meaning you're just as likely to fall to your doom as you are to slay skeleton creatures. The game was challenging, but the controls put you at a further disadvantage. That's to say nothing of legitimately awful games like Friday the 13th, where your characters ran everywhere and would often jump right into attacks from enemies, like zombies who would appear inches in front of your face. During battles with Jason, for instance, his attacks might miss you by a mile, but you'd still take damage. Nowadays, most game controls are smoother and more sophisticated. Characters respond to your button presses and stick shifting more obediently, and ideally, you only take damage if your character actually gets hit with something. It's the difference between stumbling around aimlessly in the NES Friday the 13th and taking control while fully exploring Crystal Lake in the new generation Friday the 13th game. More chances to win Older games had no real interest in letting you stick around if you sucked. In many cases, you had three or four lives, with very few chances for extra ones. Zelda 2, for example, offered only six extra lives across its massive adventure, and not a shred more. They could be collected once, and once all those lives were lost, you were booted back to the starting gate to make the long, swampy trek back to where you were last mauled by flying eyeballs. Today's games are way more patient, much to the relief of clumsy gamers. No longer are you stuck with just a few lives to live. Many games now offer unlimited lives, and rather than starting at the beginning after each game over, you simply respawn at your last checkpoint. Even in adventure game series like Metroid or RPGs like Final Fantasy, where you technically only have one life, health packs and potions are far more numerous now than in earlier games. Loaded Arsenal Back in the day, games often expected you to survive with a single gun and limited ammo. If you're playing Super Pitfall, for example, you better use what you have wisely or risk getting eaten alive by the bad guys. Even games that offered more than that, like Metroid, didn't exactly bombard you with tools. Meanwhile, 2010's Other M featured 16 weapons and items plus a detailed map, and a feature called Concentration, where you could replenish all your ammo at any time simply by focusing your power. There's a simple explanation why. Today's games are focused more on fun, and developers know there's nothing fun about running out of bullets. On the other hand, being able to shoot everything that moves for as long as the player wants is a good time, so why deprive paying customers of the pleasure? Completion Play for most of gaming's history, players had one goal in mind – win the game. In Super Mario, you had to beat the final Bowser. In Sonic, you conquered Dr. Robotnik. In Burger Time, you made burgers. Hey, a goal is a goal. Whatever the game told us to do, we did it, no matter how difficult they made the job. This focus has changed significantly in the past couple gaming generations, thanks to those little miracles called achievements. Now, in a game like Skyrim, finishing the main story and killing the evil dragon Alduin is just another fun thing to do. The true challenge is completing the entire game game, getting 100% of the achievement trophies, collecting every collectible the game offers, finishing all available side quests, and making your character as strong as the game will allow. The best part, though, is that it's all optional. You don't have to collect all 999 power moons in Super Mario Odyssey to fight Bowser. You can simply collect the minimum, whip that turtle's tail and save Peach for the hundredth time. But if you truly want to challenge yourself, the option for total completion is there. Constant autosaving as we've established, old-school games were pretty unforgiving if you couldn't finish them in one go. Today's games have changed that, thanks to perhaps the greatest gaming invention since the A button, autosave. In some cases, like in South Park, the fractured but whole, autosaving kicks in at virtually every new screen, meaning you can start almost exactly where you left off every time. Few things are more satisfying than stopping a game and finding your most recent autosave was five seconds ago. Longer games if you never die, the original Super Mario Brothers without using warp zones takes a little over an hour to complete. 
Many games from the era were even shorter than that. As you might expect, few players would be enthused to shell out a bunch of cash for just a couple hours of mushroom stomping fun. So the game zammed up the difficulty level, making it so you'd likely die dozens of times per level before you mastered it and could hit the next stage, just to repeat the process. Just like that, a two-hour game magically took dozens of hours to complete. Today, however, games don't need to artificially expand themselves through needless difficulty, because so many of them are naturally longer. The main missions are rarely too difficult to complete, but with a couple hundred hours of side material, fans are rarely bored. The sheer amount of content gives you your money's worth, even if you stay alive the entire time. Story Driven How many old-school games feature a complex engrossing story? We'll answer for you, not too many. Most games never extended the narrative beyond a person has been kidnapped to go save them. Obviously, plenty of games still ignore story in favor of action but there are many more that do have a tale to tell, and those games are typically easier to finish. That's because stories are simply better told when you're not constantly being interrupted by going back to previous checkpoints. Take Final Fantasy, for example. The first few games had basic, easy-to-follow stories and were also among the most unforgiving RPGs in history. Once the stories got more engrossing, the difficulty level dipped significantly. Final Fantasy XV is not difficult to beat, but it has a strong story, combined with plenty of side content. Meanwhile, any version of Doom can be as hard as it wants to be, because the story isn't much more than, see those demons? Shoot them. Level Playing Field Some old games would use various tricks to set the pace for the players, and it was rarely user-friendly. Probably the most common example of these restrictions was the time limit. Other games featured auto-scrolling levels where the stage's invisible wall would start moving on its own. This forced players to continuously move through the level, whether they were ready or not. Today's games rarely feature such limits, allowing the player to play through and learn about levels at their own pace. You might get the occasional time-limited section, but that usually exists to serve the story, not simply to make game time more difficult. More difficulty modes With some games, it's not that difficulty has vanished, it's simply no longer the only path you can choose. In the early days, frustratingly hard was usually the default difficulty setting. Some games offered an easy mode, but there was no real point behind that. Some games even mocked you for choosing it, like Act Razor 2, which told you to try playing a normal mode next time. Today, however, players can often pick their own difficulty level, allowing many more players to finish games without feeling like the ending was gifted to them. Easy modes still exist for any player who simply wants to play through the game. As for players who want that hair-pulling, controller-smashing, system-cursing challenge the 80s provided so frequently, many games offer super-hard modes to truly test you.